question will be to Grandma Claudia Fonseca. How fast uh, do you think the Congress could establish a serious debate concerning to the Cuban blockade, to lifting the Cuban blockade? How fast? Well, the, uh, the, 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 in the translation, we call it that the embargo. Blockade is a, a little bit of a, a bigger obstruction than even embargo. But uh, thank you, Maria, for your question. And it's really almost where we started uh, the conversation. And that is that I do believe that there is strong bipartisan support to lift uh, the embargo in the Congress. However, it's not uh, universal and it certainly does not appear to be shared by uh, those in power who have the ability to bring a bill to the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I do think that, uh, that with public sentiment and support of this, uh, the more the public is aware of what the possibilities are, um, I think the sooner it will pass. Uh, one of the reasons we're, we, we would like to see the embargo lifted, it's been a long time and as has been said, an unsuccessful uh, technique and uh, we also want to have improved all of our relationships, whether they be uh, political, cultural, and certainly economic. And two of the members of our delegation uh, have uh, uh, are play leadership roles in the Congress and on issues that, that are subtopics that are of concern to Cuba. One is telecommunications. Congressman Eshu is a, uh, a ranking Democrat on that telecommunications and internet committee, and I'd like her to address uh, that, that issue in relationship to the lifting the Thank you, uh, Madam Leader. Uh, I think the operative word is future. And so, uh, 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 interwoven in all of our discussions uh, with uh, representatives of uh, the Cuban government, uh, we talked about the future and what will help shape uh, a brighter future for the Cuban people, uh, uh, really speak to the hopes and aspirations of especially young people uh, when it comes to communication, to the internet, uh, to uh, expanding broadband uh, in Cuba. Uh, these are the essential tools uh, for a 21st century society, uh, and they are transformative. Uh, when we visited the Latin School of Medicine and met with the students there, I asked about uh, telemedicine, uh, and the student replied, there just isn't any, it doesn't exist. But it would if there were broadband. And so this touches people in their lives, in their day-to-day -day lives, uh, in, in so many ways. And, uh, and so uh, it is, I think, uh, nothing short of remarkable that on the heels of December 17th and what President uh, Obama announced, uh, that the follow-up in the telecommunications and broadband sector uh, is very exciting in terms of an opportunity for the Cuban people and we want to work uh, with them in order to advance it so that uh, uh, really the values of the Cuban people in education, in medicine, in, uh, in commerce, in, in uh, scholarship, uh, that all of that can be advanced just as it is in our society and other countries around the world. Mr. Cicilline mentioned the financial community, and we can go to there, but another very prominent industry is the agricultural industry, both in your country and in ours, and I wanted to call on Congressman Colin Peterson, who, as I said, was the chairman, now the ranking Democrat on the Agriculture Committee, and has studied this, uh, the possibilities of, of agriculture, the trade, whatever, commerce between the United States and the United States. Thank you, uh, Madam Leader. And uh, you know, I've supported raising, uh, lifting the embargo since I was elected 25 years ago. And we've made some progress, and we've gone backwards. You know, and it's hurt both of our countries. It's hurt my farmers. It's hurt your people uh, because your food costs more. And it's really a policy that makes no sense. So we have been, uh, you know, on this trip, I've been meeting with some of your 
uh, uh, people at the Ministry of Agriculture, some of your uh, folks that are involved in the agriculture business and interested in it. Uh, and I think we uh, need to move forward in, in getting past this uh, embargo somehow or another. Uh, we'd like to sell food to you folks, uh, but we have put things in place in the United States that makes it difficult, uh, which is dumb, but we did it. Uh, and, you know, there's problems on both sides. So, you know, we can uh, help you by you know, selling you food, a uh, good food at a little bit cheaper price. But I think we can also help if we can get past this embargo. Uh, we can help your agriculture to develop. And I think one of the ways we can really make a difference in this country in the rural areas is by helping to reestablish agriculture and make it profitable and economically sensible. And I think the United States can do that. And uh, so we have uh, made some connections. We're going to try to figure out how we can work within the process and uh, be positive in, in helping uh, you folks. You're, you're importing 75% of your food. And you don't need to be doing that. You could be producing a lot of that food in Cuba. And, uh, you know, I think the United States can help in that regard. So we've uh, had a very positive trip, uh, and uh, we look forward to working with uh, both sides and make things work better in the future. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, there's been bipartisan, I just want to emphasize, and the U.S. Congressman DeMario, uh, to make uh, emphasize that point in terms of the I, I think it's important to, to note, and I don't know how many of you do know this, that uh, historically uh, in the House of Representatives, there has been bipartisan support for normalizing relationships with Cuba. Uh, Congressman McGovern and myself, I know that Congressman uh, uh, Peterson uh, have participated in a, uh, a, the, the, the Cuba Working Group. And the, all of the issues that have been mentioned have been on the table. Whether it was agriculture, I had the opportunity of taking a bipartisan delegation seven years ago to Cuba on the issue of agriculture. And we watched the rice being offloaded uh, on the docks from Vietnam uh, and Malaysia. Why can't that rice come from the United States? Uh, and so that the point is that there is, and Portia, to your question, because you asked about the uh, a, a Republican uh, a, 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 a Congress, the leader talked about that we can't get that piece of legislation because they have that determination. But the fact of the matter is that there are on both sides of the aisle very, very strong support for addressing these issues and wanting to move, uh, as, as has been pointed out, to the future and how we can continue to normalize these relationships. And I think I just want to emphasize, I mean, what Congressman Delora said, there is bipartisan support. The issue is whether the current leadership in the House and Senate will schedule a bill for a debate and a vote. And that right now seems to be a problem. And so we're going to reestablish the Cuba Working Group in a bipartisan way. Um, and we're going to, in a bipartisan way, try to press the Republican leadership to practice a little democracy in the House of Representatives and allow us to have a debate and a vote on this issue. Uh, this is an important issue, and members of both parties ought to be able to debate it, say what they feel about it, and vote yes or no on it. And I think if we have that opportunity, uh, we can we can prevail. So much of what we're talking about is about time, and uh, for us, uh, it is inevitable that this will happen. For some, it might be inconceivable. So we just want to shorten the distance between at the time between the inevitable and the inconceivable, and hopefully that will be pick up steam. Uh, yeah.